Good morning, friends. It's Alexor again with another fantastic build. Um, I hope so, at least. This one is the Blizzard um, the Room Master, as you can tell. We made a Blizzard build that actually shreds. Because you can just keep spamming the Blizzard on people. That's basically the idea of how you play this game. Uh, this build, rather. You know, three times the hero rune, like the cold rune, casts the blizzard. So you can just stack it, but we also have an item that makes us... When we cast the frost wall, we also cast the blizzard, as you can tell. So you can just stack blizzards on top of each other. And that's just a lot of damage. We're only using two skills from the rune master here. We also use the this one, that is the shield. Right, we currently have. See him just stacking this on top of this guy and it just shreds him easy and fast. And the other one was this one. If you have one hero rune, one fire, and this one again, and we cast the Rio Wings Frost God. It gives us a lot of defense mechanisms, vault, etc. Only these two. This one. And all on um, Frost, that is the Blizzard, Revix Blizzard. And we drop these on top of each other. So this does a lot of damage. This is an empowered monolith doing just fine. I also went to 150 crush and I think was doing fine. No problem. So this can do 200 for sure. Maybe even more. I didn't test it yet, but it can for sure. So let's look at the items first. So we know what we need. For this to work, you absolutely need this one. Okay, phrase retreat. Offhand Catalyst, that gives us intelligence and spell crit chance, but also plus four to Frost Wall, very nice. Frost Wall duration, cool. But the key thing is the third one. When you directly cast Frost Wall, it is cast directly in front of you, and you leap backwards a short distance and invoke Revix Blizzard at the wall. That's the key. We want to have the Blizzard being auto-cast by this. Also, more cold damage over time. Cold damage over time to frozen enemies. Great offhand. Very great offhand. This one helps also a lot. And you should have this really, and most people have this, not very rare. Because it gives us um, frostbite on hit, 108%. So we throw a lot of frostbite on people. Frostbite duration, freeze rate, ward gain, and of course the ward retention per uncapped cold resistance. If you want to go down that route, that's great. So these two, I would say, are must, must have. The fundamental criterion is not 100% necessary, but it gives us a great buff in damage. Because, of course, we get the plus two to ruining invocation. The implicits of this item are really great. Armor, mana, spend, gain this ward, and ward decay threshold. Because ward, of course, is how the master survives, right? That's his defense mechanism. But the key thing is all that text. Basically, it's just for your invocations, as the first rune, you gain more damage. Um, we are focusing on the first one, yeah. No, wait, wait, it's the at the bottom. I actually just realized I fucked up. <laughs> I was playing around with a, with a different weapon. Okay, let me explain to you. The first one is what we actually were going for. 28% more damage while using a wand for invocations with Hero as their first rune. I was playing this with the Mad Alchemist Slayton for so long and then just swapped out this one, uh, losing damage with it. I didn't even realize that's the problem. So you can use the Mad Alchemist Slayton, which is great. Because it gives you a lot of um, like frostbite and frailty and all this. But it's another unique if you don't have it. But it is great with this one. Um, because we don't get the, the third one. So basically the one, the first rune you use with your invocation. You gain more damage with this um, body armor if you have the proper item equipped. Which we don't have. So we have to run a wand here. So we fucked up. But it's fine. Also at the bottom for... Um, but since we're using Hero as the second rune, we gain more damage per strength. But we also use um, Ra as our second rune. Sometimes that is for attunement, even though we don't have it human very much. Yeah, nine, but that's that's fine. So you can play around with this. I mainly use it for the War DK threshold, the mana spend, and the plus two on runing invocation. And I wanted the first damage buff on Hero, but I fucked up with the with the um, one with the scepter. Whatever. So the idea is you gotta have a wand, right? And you gotta have strength or attunement. 
a little bit more to gain more damage. Now, this is uncapped, right? So, if you have, I don't know, 50 attunement, which is unlikely, but then you gain 50 times 3% more damage. So, 150 damage in this case, 150% more damage um, for each invocation. That is really great. So, this can sort of spiral out of control pretty heavily later. But um, if you don't have it, you don't need it, as I said. You just look for a body armor that gives you maybe plus two on the runic invocation or maybe frost wall or whatever so you can put more stats in that or you look into intelligence is always a classic elemental damage especially elemental damage over time because we do a lot of frostbite damage or just cold damage right so here of course the helmet very simple Try to find exalted one with runic invocation because you want to have as many points in runic invocation as possible this also has the elemental damage buff that's great intelligence health region crit strike avoidance great great helmet very nice this one of course it should be a wand um but i like it so much because it has the spell damage elemental damage and freeze rate multi and chill on hit this one was an insane drop so i went with it and didn't even think about it's a scepter and not a wand so i lost the damage buff from this it's fine. Maybe we find a better wand. Scepter is not really cutting it, but you know what I'm talking about. You still can use the build as is. You see, it was doing a lot of damage, but maybe you will find a better um, body armor then. Great though. It's basically what you scale with is elemental damage. Freeze rate also helps. Spell damage or uh, elemental damage over time. Spell damage again, crit multi, you want to scale with crit multi late game, you have enough crit chance with your passives. Dodge rating, cold resistance, nice. Spell damage, mana region, health. Mana region is also something you want to have, if possible, because all your spells or invocations eat a lot of mana. And spell damage is what I went with mostly. Mana region again, elemental damage over time, again, physical has health, simple. Mana region, you see all these three have mana region, right, because we are spamming a lot of spells so we need a lot of mana region here freeze rate multi insanely good this one was also pretty good 15 intelligence very nice intelligence scales all your skills always damage over time fizz res void res i want i tried to make resistances better here i'm not fully there yet but there we are see this gains us attunement that helps us with this to gain more damage int hybrid health tier 7 what a great drop what a great drop and yeah, that's pretty much a bit it about the items. Again, uh, I fucked this up. I didn't realize until I was making this build seconds ago. Um, this needs to be a wand. Again, you can also... We can actually go out of here. You can also run the Mad Alchemist label, ladle. I'm going to show you. Uh, where is it? This one. Because that is a wand. And it has chance to slow, apply frailty, shred armor, electrify poison... And you gain more cast speed point intelligence, mana gain, uh, that's fine, and 6% more spell damage per negative ailment on the target, which you put a lot on. So, also spell mana cost is less. So this is great. It's a great substitution, and you can find these from the from the Exiled Mages um, pretty rarely. Maybe not with 2 LP, but you will find them. But I liked all the damage on this. And it's doing fine. Doing just fine. Idols. You want to have the Throne of Ambition. Now, this is a unique idol, as you can tell. Um, it's not that easy to find that. I have it twice, actually, but I play this game a lot. So, because this helps you a lot. You gain a stack of Ambition when you hit a boss or rare enemy, and there's a lot of rare enemies. 2% more fire damage, 2% more cold damage per stack, more armor per stack, max 20 maximum stacks. So, this goes up to 40% more damage when you are hitting on enemies. So, this is a lot of damage this actually can provide. Gain Vault when hit, spell cold damage, great. Vault retention, elemental res, well, I tell you, this is just resistances. Damage over time, void res, health, 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 cold damage, vault retention, all retention. So the idols are pretty much about health and vault retention because that is your health. This is how I usually do it. And just these two nice additions for more damage. For the skills. The Ruling Invocation is pretty much the same as always, except we're not focusing on a specific damage type. We're going with Ward Gain and Mana Refunded, and we're going to go down here, obviously. This got to be maxed. Invocations that include at least one Hero Rune have a chance to chill and freeze. Because the Freeze Rate Multiplier will free means we're freezing enemies, and that is great. 
because when they are frozen, they cannot deal damage to us. It's pretty much like fear for the Necromancer. That's a great mechanism. Um, freeze rate again per hero rune. And this one is interesting. Runic energy. Every second you go without casting a runic invocation, you gain a stack of runic energy. We currently have our 15 stacks down here. That means the next invocation deals 2% more damage per stack. And that's a great damage dealer. A great damage addition for your invocations. By the way, this also does apply to invocations cast by your item, basically with the Frost Wall. Penetration per intelligence. Great. More damage, more damage. That's simple. And we want to have uh, longer buff durations. This is very simple, actually. No, nothing crazy. Oh, yeah. We also went with this. Um, can you see this? Hold up. This one. Copied score. It's ruling invocation. Now has a chance to be repeated per stack of ruling energy. So sometimes you have a chance to cast twi uh, the blizzard twice instead of once with your invocation. Flame Rush, also pretty much the same as always, except we don't actually want to have the epilogue that auto casts our invocation because we are using the Flame Rush just to move a little and actually gain the second hero rune so we can invoke our real Frost God, right? So we don't want to have this invoke right away. So I removed the epilogue. Everything else is pretty much the same. Um, less damage taken, the buff lasts longer, you gain wall per second, mana efficiency. And I put a little bit into more damage because I had points that I can't use. So I went with this. Further and faster and the rune embers. Again, this is mostly all traversal skill. We don't really care about the damage. It's just to dodge shit and move faster through the echoes. Right? Very simple. Frost wall. Now this is our key one of the main damage dealers because with the frost wall we actually also cast our blizzard and we jump away a little bit which is great dodge shit ward gain mana gain very simple cleanses negative aimments on pass through that's also great and of course after you pass through your frost wall your next direct running invocation is empowered so it costs less mana and deals more damage so what you want to do is you know for example you want to cast the wall and the blizzard then you run through it, and then you cast another blizzard. Now, the second invocation did more damage. What you can also do is you cast it, then you jump through it, and then you do this, and now your frost guard wall is stronger because your wall, you were flame rushing through it. A key thing is... Um, where is it? Does it even say it here? Exactly, yeah. The longer you wait... Before you go through the wall, the more damage you gain. Okay? For each second. So basically, if you cast it, and you do other shit, it's just shooting at people and casting, and then right before it ends, you go through it. Now, it's even stronger in power. Right? So that's very, very powerful. Very powerful um, node over here. Then we, of course, max our frostbite chance. We max the freeze rate multiplier and the damage. Additional spell damage. And the initial freeze has increased duration. So we're gonna go all the way over here. You gain ward whenever enemies pass through the wall. That's awesome. And uh, more ward when they pass through. And down here we have it lasts longer and you do more damage. Very simple. So you wanna have the wall give you more ward. You, get, you go up a lot of ward when you actually fight in enemies to up like 3k or something. And it does more damage when we pass through. Frost wall again is our main sort of damage creation. Through the blizzard it, it does. Flame ball is pretty much the same as always, except we went with the fire aura that is converted to cold. That grants a freeze rate. That's pretty much the only thing I changed. Everything else is still the same. The dual charge, astonish, and of course down here, damage reduction. But this is kind of a nice addition because we want to have as much freeze rate as possible. Right? And the frost claw. <clears throat> is our main dam no not main damage is our main <clears throat> damage spell to cast the hero runes right because with Q you can just spam this and get your runes up and then you can cast your blizzard so this is a cheap simple spell with which we are able to cast hero runes and get our, get our frost runes and it also of course does damage crit chance mana cost damage to frozen um, more damage and ex explosion, all this stuff. This is good. You can retaliate with Frost Claw, so if you are being hit, then you actually cast the Frost Claw on enemies. And you gain ward based on its freeze rate multiplier. 
You want to have this down here. Creates no longer a burst of target, but you can stagger these. So you can basically just keep casting them. Now, I was also looking... Most people also go into the On Through the Snow right here. It causes you to recast it at a target location. But this increases the mana cost so much. This is already at 10. You can't really spam it anymore then. This is a bit annoying. So I didn't go for it. Um, everything else is mana cost, chance to gain mana back, slow chance, chill chance, aimants cleansed. And of course, over here, we want to go with longer duration for frostbite and chill. Very simple. Very, very simple. Now the passives. Um, the room has uh, pretty much always play the same, really. Except sometimes you go for, for example, um, lightning or fire. But you want to go for this most of the times. Knowledge of destruction. Crit chance, 70%. Crit multi, 30%. Because especially late game, we scale our damage with spell crits. We want to have the blizzard critting people, right? Or even the frost wall. So this is why we go with this later. Then, <coughs> the room master. It's pretty simple, really. You always go for the arcane focus over here. Mana increase cast speed. And arcane focus, intelligence. You want to have the int, right? Area for area skills, that's very powerful for us. Makes, makes our blizzard bigger. Great. Um, yeah, crit multi with a wand. If you actually don't fuck it up like I did, you want to run a wand there and you gain more crit multi, that's insanely good. Now I get water retention, which is not bad, but not really necessary. Um, yeah, health and less damage taken from ignored, uh, ignored, ignited, shocked, or chilled. That's great. Basically, survivability, health region, mana region, double effect of 50 int. Great. After using Traversal skill, your next non-channeled spell does more spell damage and crit chance. And this is pretty much great because we, as I said, we want to go through this and then do this. And then shoot the skill or maybe even just cast it right away. So we gain more damage on our next skill. Also has a double chance for double damage. This is just a nice addition. This gives you more ward. So you, all, you survive better. Now I'm only 85, so I'm going to put the build link in the description what you actually should be going for with this mostly. Um, or how you max this out, really. This is great. More damage to bosses and rares. And double the effect with Ra Rune or Frost Wall. They just want to do more damage to bosses. Makes it easier to, to do the bossing. This, of course, Int. Int is great for us. It also gives us a buff, buff with this, what was it? Uh, something gave us, yeah, this one, 50% in, uh, 50 in Int. So we're gonna need more Int and cooldown recovery speed. But for Int, also great, very great. Rune Ward Avalanche, this is awesome. I wouldn't put more than three into this because you don't need 100%, 6% is enough. You gain more spell, cold damage. Per, um, yeah, with the Rune Ward. 10 actually, that's pretty great, that's a lot. When you use cold skills, which is what you do all the time. And of course, the spell damage over here and spell damage to branded bosses. You want to get this up as well later. This is mostly about survivability with vault retention and all that stuff. And uh, int, you don't really go into specific cold damage or anything like that. But you also want to have in the sorcerer, you want to have arcane momentum because you're going to keep casting spells like crazy all the time. So you want to max these two out. This is pretty much it for the Sorcerer though. You could go into the Afterglow, but I'd rather put more into the Room Master. Um, for example, this one. You kind of want to have more survivability. Damage is just fine. Um, but the Sorcerer or the, the, the Mage always dies fast because he doesn't have... He's like not a tank, right? He's a Mage. So that's... You want to put more ward into your face so you can survive longer. Very simple. Um, that was it, yeah. Again, what you do is you cast your frost wall and jump back, and then you keep casting your other shit. You run through it, you invoke more blizzards, then you cast it again. You can just you don't have to wait for the um, for the frost wall to run out. You can just keep casting it all the time. You can even do it twice. It doesn't matter. It just means more people run through it. It gives you more wall. So this is what you do. You want to just stack blizzards on top of the enemies. And there's one problem, of course, because sometimes the enemies can run out of it, or maybe even bosses if they move around a lot. But then you have to recast it again. And you gain ward as long as the enemies are in it. So your defense depends a lot on how you place your blizzards. 
So this you have to figure out a little bit how you how you do your placements, how you when you cast your frost wall, when you cast your blizzard. So, but you're gonna figure this out fast. As I said, this does very very fine on high corruption, no problem whatsoever. I had no issues with it, and it's a it's a fun build, and I enjoyed it a lot because blizzard finally is is kind of cool to use. So let me know in the comments what you think of it. Please don't call me out on my, my fuck up with the wand. I know, I realize. <laughs> Maybe call me out. It's all fine. I can take this. Um, yeah, this should be a wand. If this would be a wand with these stats, that is perfect. If you don't find a, a wand with very good stats, then use the Mad Alchemist Ladle to actually get the buffs from the fundamental criteria. Anyway, that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next video.